Uh, also, you need to set up a good multilingual site. Otherwise, this is not going to work. And set multilingual content if you need that in your extension. So it's not that automated. It's really good for translators because they can see the workflow. Another counterpart that I have not uh, said here is that uh, you, you cannot see how many strings are left to translate. While editing the ini files, you can see that. So, yeah. And Transifex. Transifex is like a lightsaber for, for translators and developers. I'm not into giving extra publicity because uh, I don't like that. I'm not paid. <laughs> so, but it's good because it's free for Floss. You also have a, uh, a server uh, a package that you can install in your, you can install Transifex in your computer and then have your server serving, doing the same work. I'm not sure about the, the new version. I tried with the latest one and I could not do it because it's in Django and I have no Django proficiency. So, well, uh, yeah, it's, it's free for Floss and that's really good because you can, uh, if you are doing GPL, that most of us are doing that because of Jet. So automatically you can create your projects there and you do not have to pay for anything. Uh, Transifex automatically handles the language differences. And that's really cool because you only have to update the new English uh, file and then all the other languages that depends on that project will be automatically updated. And then the translators can see the new languages and can translate them. So it's, it's really good. Also, it has uh, good things in the new version that is pretty cool, uh, is that it allows uh, comments on the strings so that when you have a string that needed the, the URL thing that we sp I spoke about, you can add a, a comment there and all translators will see that comment and then they can have that into account. It also has a glossary that can help you with the uh, Akiva backup and Respaldo thing that I spoke about in the, in the beginning. So it's really good if your translators uh, fancy to use it. So it's really good. Also, you have a command line interface that you can integrate into your workflow and your Git processes or SPN processes. I'm not happy with the command line interface because uh, it's never working for me as it should. Actually, I had to create a bash script that uh, makes call it one by one, one language but by one language is pretty slow. But it works. It's more stable than the <laughs> trying to get all the translations and that stuff. So yeah, it has a, uh, a command line interface that your translators, if you, they have some uh, technical expertise, can use. So it's good, and you can use it and integrate into your workflow. So it's good. The counterpart of this is that if you use the service, your you, your translators need to re uh, to sync in to the platform. And well, I have not found a translator yet that does not want to to come into this term to agree with Transifex terms and have he an account there. But well, you may find one because, for instance, I'm I'm very uh, strict about who I where I am uh, syncing up and giving my details. So it's a possibility, okay? And that's a, a bad point about translation. Can I ask a question and make a little comment? Um, on the registration, of course, there's no reason why we shouldn't be giving our translators email addresses on our domain, which they could then use for translating. Yeah, sure. Then on the language differences, if we change the original English version, I'm afraid, what do the translators see there? I think it's not getting there. I don't know if you, if I told you uh, uh, some time ago, but if you have to change, uh, I think I, I told you. If you have uh, to change a previous language file, it's better to create a new one and then remove the old language file. Because that will get, re when I update the, when you update the, the new language file with the old one, remove it and the new one, uh, the, the old one will disappear of the language files of all the language files, and the new one will appear. And then next release of the language file, you can set it back to what it was. 
because it's already out of the database. But no, if it it cannot, I think it not does not check the. No, it does not check. Yeah. And the but uh, sorry, but for instance, for the custom scripts we have, we did not check either the the content of the strings. It's it's really no, costly. Like I, I think I think it's very costly. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they for Transifex at first I think it was not thought for any file, sorry. So it's a kind of it was a kind of very PO oriented. I don't know if you know the PO format for translating uh, programs, software or the free software. It's very popular if you translate free software it's the PO uh, strings. It was thought about it was thought for, for that. And then any files came with their peculiarities. So we have waited till a couple of months ago to, to have a good Transifex client for, for us in the in the ini files world. So yeah, has some counterparts. Yeah, you, if you have to change a language file, on, then it's not going to take the can the changes. Okay. Yeah, the user roles are permissions. I'm discovering them every day. <laughs> uh, I s started with a simple scheme where you have coordinators and translators. Uh, okay? Uh, I mean in general, I mean in terms of yeah, in terms of yeah. You have coordinators and translators. And a couple of weeks ago, I, I we st well, since last year, we have started to get reviewers. And a couple of years ago, I noticed that you also have the reviewer uh, role in Transifex that, from my point of view, should not have more permissions than uh, translators, but actually do. <laughs> so you have a coordinator of the language string, you have uh, reviewers, and you have also uh, translators. And yeah, they can, they can work together if they want, or well, they, they should work together, actually. So yeah, coordinator is the like the boss. <laughs> it's the big one. They can do anything, and reviewers are not so so powerful, but they can also uh, do much more things than translators. If if a review, for instance, if a reviewer mark a string as as reviewed, the translator cannot edit it. Okay, so because it's reviewed, it's perfect. You should not. Uh, change that. So, yeah, is is how it's working. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. But from my point of view, that has no sense. If you think of it, well, it might have sense. So, but yeah, it's well, well, it's the what we spoke about. The you are not handling the workflow in this uh, platform. So that's something you have to. Yeah, you can have comments on the translations, uh, only for, for that translation, for that language. But you can see uh, them in line with what you are translating, I guess. You have to see them. The comments? No. Yeah. I, think, I don't think so. What's a Wi-Fi problem? Uh, don't have Wi-Fi, so uh, yeah. But I, I think you can have you, you can see the comments because in Akiva we had some some discussions about several strings and they were there. Another thing is that Transifex also suggests uh, new uh, translations to the translation based on the content of the strings. Uh, so even if you do not have a glossary, it is suggesting you similar translation, and that's kind of useful when you are translating. So, but the I don't want to to focus on Transifex. It's just an option. I like it because it's made my life much easier. But uh, and it's what we are using now because our translators really asked for it, and yeah, it's helping them a lot. And we have making several uh, improvements in translations thanks to Transifex. Also, it helped us to to get more translators because some people is like seeking for things to translate. Um, and then you you can ask them and they join. yeah they 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 ask you hey, I want to translate your extension okay let's see if we can work together so 
the next, the last part of, almost the last, and I want to be uh, quicker because I think you are hungry, and yeah, it's, we are almost the time, is to deliver the translations to the user, okay? Uh, in, yeah, it's, it's really hard to, to get uh, the, the, translate, the translations in the package of your extension. Because well, you you then have to wait till the translations are done, or have a like a week till the new translations, and it's not a good option, I think. And also the the size of your package will increase, so it's not it's not that good. And in Jula, the only things that are considered translations are the official translations of the Jula core, so. You may have translations, but they are installed as files in your system. So you cannot have like a, well, I don't think, so, I don't know, but probably you cannot have a repository to get a new translation and that stuff, so. <coughs> and also, everyone speaks English, don't they? Now, everyone does not, is, cannot understand English, so, uh, but the, there are some people that do understand or have some proficiency in English. We don't care about them. We care about the people that uh, really a word in English ha can be like the hardest word to surpass. We care about them because if they are going to your site and see that everything is in English or the extension is in English or whatever is in English, they, they will not cross that barrier. So. Uh, also, your documentation and your extension and everything is in English, so it's not a good thing. I'm not saying that because translating an extension is a hard work, but you can manage it. But translating documentation, <laughs> wow, <laughs> I have never uh, get myself into that because it's really hardest, harder. So, yeah. Uh, probably, yeah, yeah. I think it's harder because you have to to get the meaning of what the the original author is trying to to get. So, uh, for for this, my recommendation is that you have a, a language page, a landing page for the most relevant languages, and you can check that by the number of downloads. We are not doing this, <laughs> and also uh, to have the language uh, description, the the package description that you provide in in that language. Uh, some users, some t of our translators, ask it for us. And I think it's really helpful because you can see, like, for instance, this translation is not all complete. Well, the translator add that uh, string and then uh, the, the user that is downloading it, that can understand that in his language and I think it's pretty cool, okay? <coughs> so the main point of this is you have to simplify your translator work and you have to think your workflow for them because it's really hard to translate and some of your translators will not have technical proficiency. Some of them are just writers or whatever, or just inter integrators in the lowest level. So they do not know anything about bash scripting, about git, about uh, transifex client. They, they know nothing about that. And they should not know it because they do not need it. They only need to know the language and English. <laughs> so simplify their life. <coughs> Also, you have to be very communicative with them and uh, answer all their questions and help them to provide a good translations and ask them to ask you because some of them are like, oh, I don't want to bother. No, ask them to, to ask the things they do not know because they, they really uh, need that. Also, make them interact with uh, each other because they can help each other and also uh, they can uh, well, they, they can be like more member of the of the team. No, they can feel like that. So, it's cool. Also, uh, one thing that you should do is you have trans. If you are using Transifex, for instance, they are s receiving a notification probably or not. But if you send them an email, that improves a lot the the reaction of the translator. If you send a, like a regular email about hey, we have new language streams, please take a look at them and just thank you for the last uh, thing you did and that stuff, they, they will be really, really good. But never saturate their inbox because they are working in several things. We, we had translators that uh, had to uh, quit because they were working so much that they had no time for, for translating, so yeah. 
And yeah, last time, last thing was my our recipe at J events. Uh, and our recipe is simplifying translator works. Uh, we pick up translators from our user base. If I get contacted from uh, in Transifex by someone, I first thing I ask is, do you know the the component? Are you in our user in our forums? Because if the user is in our forums, it's like a guarantee that or something knows about the component. So, uh, yeah, we, we we pick them from the user base or we encourage them to, to know the extension before they translate, okay? We offer them a uh, club subscription uh, when they meet goals, simple goals, like for instance, when they uh, complete the main component translation, well, they get a, a subscription for that, and when they keep translating, they, that subscription is is uh, improved and that stuff, so yeah, it's. It's as a way of selling, how of telling them how important they are. We had uh, uh, custom-made scripts that get the languages from Git and upload them to Transifex, just clicking a button. That's very cool. And they, they use Transifex because they feel more comfortable. But we also provide the, the translations in a in a installation package so that they can download it and edit with a file editor if they feel more comfortable with that so yeah one thing that one cool thing about Transifex is that when you upload a, a language file an updated language file and you download the uh, translation if the one of the strings is not translated Transifex put it there with a comment uh, with a semicolon at the beginning in English so the translator can can have that any file and then translate with his a, a, a text editor. So, yeah, that's what we do. And this is my contact thing, and this is my wife and me. And I'm wearing a J and Beyond T-shirt in uh, Mexico, and it was pretty good there in Latin America. So, yeah, you may contact me if you Should want. For for yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, if you can see, here is the beach. So yeah, that that's actual beach, no, not what we have here. <laughs> so yeah, and if you fancy to contact me, you can have that. I'll provide a, a slideshare presentation in a couple of days. I'll use the JAP13 uh, hashtag in Twitter if you fancy to to get a look at that regularly in a couple of days, and then you you can download it. And if you can want to pick a card, it's, it's there. So. You can contact me later, so okay? Really? Yeah, they are. F no, no, they are no. Actually, they, they are not for free. You have to leave yours. <laughs> so yeah, if you do not have, it's okay. But if you have, you have to provide yours, or give me your email or something. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much. I'm really sorry for the ten minutes late, and um, yeah, sorry for the video too. If you are recording. <laughs> I have not asked questions. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.